voltage, uh, which says that complicated circuit can be replaced by a voltage source and a series resistor or a current source and a parallel resistor um, with the load. So that's what we will see today, what this means. So we call that um, uh, theorems. There are uh, two theorems, which we call as Thevenin theorem and a Norton theorem. So we will see what they are. So what these theorems suggest that We can replace entire circuit or network exclusive of load by an equivalent circuit that contains an independent voltage source in series with resistance such that current voltage relationship at load does not change. So this is Thevenin theorem. But if we replace a circuit by independent current source in parallel with the resistance, then that will be Norton theorem. So if we replace this line as independent current source in parallel with resistance, then this will be called as Norton theorem. So what actually we are saying in words is that let's say we have the circuit. And there are, here there is a load. We are saying that if we replace this circuit with equivalent voltage source and resistance, this equivalent voltage source we call it open circuit voltage and 
resistance we call as R thevenin, then this is thevenin equivalent circuit. Similarly, if we have the same circuit and we replace it by, and there is, we know that there will be a current here, I not, or I, sorry, let's say this is I, then this will be equal to the resistance will be the same as R thevenin, but here the current is ISC, that is short circuit current. And here we have the I current and uh, output voltage, then this is called as not an equivalent circuit. So these two um, theorems state that. So how we will get them, we will see in a um, like, in a moment, but the whole scenario is that whatever, how much we don't know how much complicated the circuit is, they said that we can replace it with the open circuit voltage and our thevenin resistance for thevenin equivalent circuit and just connect back it with the load and it should give you V out or I out, whatever you need. So let's see. So the step-by-step -step procedure is I will write it uh, before solving example 5.5, how we will do that. Procedure to solve it is like in the step one, what we will do we remove load and find voltage across the open terminal VOC for Thevenin equivalent Circuit means that uh, you remove. So this, if this is your circuit, in the first process, you will find here VOC by removing the load, and then this should be your open circuit voltage for Thevenin and England circuit. For <clears throat> For uh, not an equivalent circuit, you will short circuit. So this will be your ISC and this will be your circuit. So you will do the same except remove load and find ISC by shorting the terminals or Norton equivalent. This is the step one for the theorem. Okay. Step two is. So this is step two is common for both of them. Okay. The 
Germain, R. Thevenin at Open Terminals. with load removed by making independent voltage or current source zero okay so strictly right now we are talking about independent voltage and current source we are not talking about dependent yet okay so how can we make if we deliberately want to make voltage and current source zero how can we do that so if we want, i want to make voltage source zero what is the procedure Are we here? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Um, you short the voltage source, like yes, the wire around it. Yes, that's right. You short the voltage source. That's good. And what we should do for the with the current source, Aiden. Sorry, what was it again? I said what you should do with the current source to make it zero. Uh, open circuit? Yes, we should open circuit. It. So that's what we will do to make them zero. So these are two critical steps for um, Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuits, okay? So we should remember that. Now I'll start an example so that it will make the case for us. So example 5.5 I'm doing here. So the circuit here is Six kilo ohms, three volts, two milliamps, two kilo ohms, and one kilo ohms. And what we need to find V naught, which is across six kilo ohms. So this is V naught. So in the first step, I will remove the load, right? And I'm trying to solve Thevenin first, and then I will do Norin. Okay. So I will remove the load here from here and uh, draw the circuit again. So step one, remove load. So we are doing Thevenin first, okay. Remove load and find VOC for Thevenin equivalent circuit. Okay, sounds good. So, So after removing load, this is my circuit. Now I will pay the current state of the circuit, okay? Which is this state. So in this state, if I want to know open circuit voltage, what will be the open circuit voltage? 
it should be because uh, I need to find the voltage at this point, and I know that two milliampere's current is flowing in this loop here. So the um, resistance is three kilo ohms. So voltage here will be. So V1 is six volts. Then if I replace it here, which suggests that my open circuit voltage is nine volts here. at this point. So it means that my open circuit voltage is nine volts. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now if I do step number two. So in step number two, I will make all the sources zero of the basic circuit. I will not consult VOC circuit, I want to all the time consult the basic circuit. So the, the original circuit, I will make the sources zero and try to find our theminum. Okay, so when I make the source zero, this should go, it should be zero, it should be open circuit, and this should be short circuits, right? So, and I do not have the load here, so it should be equal to so my R Thevenin is three kilo ohms. So that's what we know here. And then I will replace the circuit with open circuit voltage and R Thevenin and then try to solve it. My VOC is six volts and R Thevenin is three kilo ohms. And I will plug it back. So in step three, Plug the Thevenin equivalent circuit back to connect with the load. So I am plugging it back and this is my six kilo ohm circuit and this should be V naught. So my V naught here will be six by nine into six and V naught here. Wasn't VOC nine volts? Yeah, that's what I was doing. This should be nine. So this is nine volts and V naught will be six volts then. Okay, so that's how I will solve and I should solve Thevenin theorem or apply Thevenin theorem to solve the circuit. So, in this case, you see that there are two step procedure that I have to do. One is that I uh, find out open circuit voltage at the open terminals after removing the load. And then 
Um, in the second step, I will make all sources zero and just try to find the resistance. Then I will plug open circuit voltage and resistance, R7 resistor in series, and then plug the circuit back to find out V0. Okay? Sounds clear? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now I'm doing Norton theorem. And there's, as the, uh, we know that answers are unique, so it should satisfy Thevenin's theorem answer, okay? So in Norton theorem, step one is remove the load and short the terminals, okay? So let's see. So I will remove, I will remove the load and short the terminal here. This is my ISC. This is three volts. This is two milliamps. This is one kilo ohms. This is two kilo ohms. This is I1. Okay. Wait, Dr. Khan, in the previous example, where do you get the six over nine from? Just a minute, one minute. Yeah. So six over nine comes from voltage divider rule. Oh, okay, got you, yeah. Okay. Yep, got it. Okay. Um, Okay, so in this circuit, if you see, we have only three volts here, which has, which already completed the circuit. So this three volts is the voltage that we have here at this point, V1. So the current in this area will be, I1 will be three by three, and that will be one milliamps. So if I draw it again, that will become one milliampere and two milliamps. This is my ISC. So the total current of ISC I will have is three milliamps. Okay, so In this step two, I don't have to find R Thevenin again. It's the same R Thevenin, which I found in Thevenin theorem. So it's the same three kilo ohms. So I will replace it in this step two, plug ISC and R Thevenin back with the load. So what I will do here is our Thevenin is equals to three kilo ohm. This is three milliamps. This is my load, which is six kilo ohms. And this is my V naught. So my load is six kilo ohms here. So I have to find V naught. I can find I naught first. So I will do I naught as three by nine into three. I applied current division rule here. And that will be one milliamps I naught. So my V naught will be six volts. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah, it's not that bad. 
Okay. So, do you remember current division rule? Yeah. You use um, the other resistor and then over the sum of the resistances times the. Yes. Yes, you you use other resistor, not the resistor uh, in question. So, like, if you want to find the current in this area for current division, you will use this resistor and the numerator. Okay. So I will do another question uh, to make it more clear: Thevenin theorem and Norton theorem. Uh, so this is the same problem that we have done last in the last lecture um, when we were making our voltage and current sources zero. So we already know the answer. So we will try to find that using Thevenin and Norton theorem, can we solve it or not? So let's see. So this is example 5.7 and this should be so last in the last lecture um v naught here we got was 48 by 7 so this was our circuit and v naught we know the answer that is 48 by 7 but we will try to see that whether we will get the same answer with Thevenin's theorem or not, or Norton theorem or not. So first we will apply Thevenin's theorem in this. Step one, remove the load and find VOC. So I will draw the circuit again. Okay. So, okay, so the circuit, uh, I can solve it by using mesh analysis. So this is my I1 and this is my I2. I know I2 is two milliamps, so I can just write I2 as two milliamps and try to find VOC, okay? So I'm writing uh, equation for mesh one, that is minus six plus 4K I1 plus 2K I1 minus I2 is equals to zero minus six plus 4K I1 plus 2K I1 minus four is equals to zero is equals to 10, 6K I1, right? Yes. So I1 will become 10 by six, five by three milliamps, okay? So how can I find VOC now?
Is it I1 times 4K? Yes, I1 times 4K and? Plus I2 times 2K? Yes, plus I2 times 2K. So that is my VOC because my VOC is the voltage drop in this whole thing. So that will become VOC is equal to I1 times 4K plus I2 times 2K, 5 by 3 into 4 plus 2 into 2. My VOC is 32 by 3 volts. Okay, so now I have to find R thevenin. Step two. So in R thevenin, I will make all the uh, sources zero and try to uh, draw the circuit again. So it's the circuit after making voltage source zero, four kilo ohms, two kilo ohms, and making current source open. There, here, here, I have two kilo ohms. Okay, so this will become my R7 and will be 4K parallel with 2K plus two kilo ohms. Okay. Is it good? Yes. Okay. Well, I have a question. How did you know to um, take off the six kilo ohms at the beginning? Like the load. How did I know that? Yeah, why didn't you just like take the, I don't know, the two for example? Okay, so um, normally we take load resistor off, right? So load resistance, you know, means the resistance across, across which you take your output voltage, right? So our output voltage is across six kilo ohms, not across two kilo ohms. Okay, okay, thank you. Right, but in more complicated circuits, sometimes um, uh, you can uh, divide your circuit in two pieces and it's up to you to decide which circuit you will solve first and which circuit you will solve second. But again, the condition is that you have to keep, uh, you have to um, maintain voltage current re relationship. We will see after that. But right now we are just thinking that this is the resistor across which we are finding out voltage and this is our load resistor. So we will take that just that off, okay? Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So- I just have a quick question. Sorry. Yes. When, so when you find R7 in, do you, you also take off, not just setting the sources to zero, but you also take off the load as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in both steps, like step one and step two, whenever you are finding VOC, R7 and or ISC, for all them, all of them, you are taking off your load resistance because you are plugging the equivalent circuit back with your load resistance. Okay, got it. So in the step three, I will plug, because this is Thevenin, so I will plug VOC in series with R7 and back with the, uh, what I'm saying, 
plug VOC and R Tevinen back with the load resistance. So that will make it 32 by 3, 10 by 3, 6 kilo ohms. And I have to find V naught. Okay. So my V naught will be 6 by 10 by 3 plus 6 into 32 by 3 makes it try to do Norton theorem. Okay, solution with the Norton theorem. In this Norton theorem, step one is that you will replace, uh, you will take off the load and replace it with the, and by a short its terminals or replace it with the short circuit. So let's see. And in, another thing to know is that here short circuit doesn't mean, we know that normally when we short some terminal, uh, all the currents uh, current, uh, take the low resistance path, ignoring all the sources. But here ISC means that we want to know the current in that branch. So it's a hypothetical current that we want to know in that branch. Okay, so I will solve it using mesh analysis. I1, I2, ISC, this is, I know my I2 is two milliamps. So let's do that. Okay, so writing mesh equation or I1. Minus six plus four K I one minus ISC plus two K I one minus I two is equal to zero. Makes it minus six plus four K I one minus four K ISC plus two K I one minus four is equal to zero. Makes it 10, six K I one minus four K ISC. So this is one of the equations. Okay, I will write the second equation. Mesh equation for ISC, right? So that will make it 4K ISC minus I1 plus 2K ISC minus I2, right? Is it fine? Okay, so it will make 4K ISC minus 4K I1 plus 2K ISC minus four is equal to zero. So it will make it four, 6K ISC minus 4K I1. So we have two equations. We want to know ISC. I will try to make, I will try to cancel out um, I1, okay? So what I did actually to cancel out, 
I multiplied this equation by six by four. Okay. Because that will make it equal to six K I one. Okay. So I will multiply this equation by six by four. So we'll make it 36 by four K I S C minus six K I one plus uh, is equal to six. Okay, and I will then add these two equations. So if this is my two, this is my one, add one and two to find IS. Okay, so this is 6K I1 minus 4K ISC is equal to 10, 36 by 4, ISC, K ISC minus 6K I1 is equal to 6, okay? Okay. So this will cancel out. This will become 16. This will become 36 by 4 minus 4. KISC 36 minus 16 by 4. Uh, 20 by 4. ISC is equal to 16 by 5 milliamps. Got it? Is it fine? Yeah, it's good. Okay. So now in the step two, I will replace ISC and R thevenin, not an equivalent circuit, with the load resistance. Resistance. Replace Norton's equivalent circuit with load resistance okay so which will make it sixteen by five milliamps and that was ten by three K. I think so yes. So this was my V naught. I need to find out current in 6k first so that will i will do i naught is equal to 10 by 3 by 10 by 3 plus 6 into 16 by 5 which will be 10 by 3 10 plus 18 by 3 into 16 by 5 10 by 28 into 16 by 5 8 by 7 milliamps. I think so, I'm right. Yes, okay, so my V naught will be 8 by 7 into 6 is equals to 48 by 7 volts. Right? Are we good here? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now um, we are done with the uh, independent voltage source, uh, you know, tackling. 
that how we will try to find heaven and end not an equal circuit if there is an independent voltage source in the circuit, only independent voltage source. But now we have to deal with the circuit that has maybe only dependent voltage source, okay? So how we will try to do that, that what uh, we will see now. Okay, so for dependent voltage source, the rule is I answer your question. Yes, sir, it does. Why am I the host? I just think classes will be in person next semester. Not completely. I hope so. I don't know. Um, we just leave. I don't know if you guys saw, but like on when you're enrolling, some of the classes do say that they're only online next semester. Yeah, I noticed that. And then you have the room numbers instead of like TBA or something. So I think they're planning on. I mean, when is the school gonna like actually decide? Cause I feel like it's so early, but like they kind of have to make a decision. Well, considering last time they made a decision and then retract it within like a week of classes starting. Oh, yeah, and then they changed their mind like nine times and we applied for housing like over and over again. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. It's okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello, Hello. can you hear me? Too good. 
Okay. Okay. So, what I was saying, what we have to do with the um, speaking on both dependent and cold Can you hear me? Yeah, but with an echo. Yeah, an echo. You are having an e echo? Yeah. yeah. Echo. Oh, okay. Sorry. Now it's fine. I think so. Yes. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay. So, what we have to do <laughs> if we have dependent voltage source? Okay. There is only dependent voltage and current source while finding Thevenin or Norton theorem, Norton theorem. We will ourselves place an independent voltage or current source at open terminals after removing the load. We will that then find voltage and current at that terminal. And in that case, your R Thevenin is actually the voltage current ratio at these at those terminals. So your R Thevenin will be voltage current ratio at this terminal. It's not the simple R Thevenin that you will be finding, uh, like we, we were trying to find the equivalent resistance. It will be the voltage current ratio at those particular terminals. So we will apply, because the circuit doesn't have any independent voltage source. So we will add a scaled version of uh, independent current and voltage source at in output terminals after removing the load. And then at those particular terminals, we will try to find voltage or current. So let's see how it will work. Okay, so this is example 5.9. Uh, yes, 5.9. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So So do you guys find that in in person classes you feel more sleepy or in online classes you feel more sleepy online online the no, walk to classes wakes me up i miss that already or what is the normal practice like how you take online class you have other distractions on in other tabs or you just focus on online class 
I got my phone right next to me, so that's a distraction. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. You're not like in in person classes. Obviously, you're not just going to go on your phone right in front of the teacher. Yeah. Okay. So what is so that? Is that top ever resistance? that you go to sleep while on in online class? I don't. I don't fall asleep. But no, not really fall asleep. But it's harder to interact with the professor sometimes. I don't know. Just my opinion. But what about Derek? What do you do? I mean, you fell asleep in online class ever? Uh, yeah, I've never completely fallen asleep, but yeah, I do struggle to pay attention sometimes. I'll be honest. Yeah. I know, I mean, it's very hard to see one person all the time. In in-person class, you have a lot of things going on that will keep you awake, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. Professor? Yeah? Is that a three or an eight? On the... Three, 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 three. It's three. Okay, so the new normal is not so good, I think. Hmm. So I am I'm afraid that uh, so there's so much on our phone or gadgets that I think that there will be a time when there will be no disease, nothing, but people will be afraid to go out because they have all the things in their on their phone, right? So it's like uh, self-isolation by your own yeah I mean you want to be self-isolated because you don't have to go out so the time is near you know <laughs> okay right. yeah so we will be trying to find Okay, so we will take it off like, okay. So we will have two kilo ohms resistance and we have to find out our Thevenin uh, actually at those terminals. Let me see, I think I, I did one thing wrong. Let me just confirm. Yes, I think in this case, when you have dependent voltage source, you will not uh, do the load should not be removed, okay? You just add another uh, source at the output, okay? So, so this is my dependent voltage source. And what I'm doing is I will add another scaled version of. So whether you will add a current source or voltage source, it depends on you, whatever seems easy to you. Here we are adding a current source because maybe it's easy to write KCL equation in the circuit. So this is my one milliamps. So what was my step one? add independent current source at output terminals. And I'm adding one milliamps. So that is three kilo ohms. Three kilo ohms. Two kilo ohm, one kilo ohm, and two kilo ohm. So this is my IX, and this will be my V2, and this will be my V1. Okay. So I did add another source. Okay. Now I will write nodal equation to find out this one, this voltage and current 
uh, across this branch is very important, okay? So let's see. So step two is uh, write KCL equation. at V1 first, let's see. So this will be V1 minus 2000 IX by two kilo ohms plus V1 by one kilo ohms. V1 by one kilo ohms plus V1 minus V2 by three kilo ohms is equals to zero. Okay, so, okay, and we know our Ix is equal to V1 by one kilo ohm, so that we can replace here. Now, if I have to write uh, equation at V2, V2, that will be V2 minus V13 by three kilo ohms minus one milliampere and V2 by two kilo ohms. Okay, so I actually did not solve this. Uh, so I just believed what book is saying. So solving above two equations. will give you V2 because you do you do not have any other unknown except V2 and V1. So you have two equations, so it should not be difficult. So your V2 is um, uh, ten by seven volts here. Okay, so now once you have your V2 here, once you have your V2 here, you can just uh, divide it by two and find the current there, okay? And uh, Yes, and then once you find the current, you can also find uh, R feminine from there. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so now once you have your V2, so as we know, step three suggests R Thevenin is equal to voltage by current ratio at the terminal. So your voltage is 10 by seven and the current that you have added is one milliamps. So your R Thevenin's voltage current ratio will be Yes, so that will be 10 by seven one milliamps. So that will be 10 by seven kilo ohms. That is your R thevenin. And that's what you're required to find in this particular example. So the thing is that it is the, the procedure of finding R thevenin is completely different than what you were doing with the independent voltage sources. Here, you just have to add a scaled version of current source at output terminals and try to find voltage or current at output term. Uh, if you have added a current source, you will try to find the voltage at output terminal. And then that voltage and current ratio will be your R thevenin. Okay, so that's, uh, that's uh, what it suggests for the, uh, what you should say, dependent voltage source. Now, if you have both independent and dependent voltage source, um, we can solve it uh, through some other technique that we will see in the next lecture. And um, so 
if our three third November uh, classes will be there, then we will have a quiz on that day. And uh, anybody of you planning to not attend the lecture on 3rd November? Because we can move the quiz uh, another day if you guys, I mean, if any one of you are planning not to come. Or you guys are for, uh, find, find that. I know, I'll be oh. here. Yes, Sabrina, yeah, yeah. that's why I'm saying. Because it's election day, right? So, I mean, is it fine that I will put it on 3rd November or you think that we, I should move the date somewhere else? Um, I can take 6th as well, okay? It's, I mean, I just don't want to make a big deal of it. So. Uh, I will take on 6th November, 3rd November will be our normal lecture, okay? okay? Thank you. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. I have one quick question. We can, yes. make, the, we can make the independent source whatever we want, right? When we add it in? Um, normally at output terminals. Because independent adding independent voter source doesn't mean that you are actually putting in there. Okay, you are just trying to find by putting the scale version of it, uh, V2 at the output terminals. Okay, the value though, the value can be anything? One milliamp, two milliamp? No, no, one milliamps only. One milliamp. Like the one thing, one makes it easier to tackle. All right, and then one volt if it's a voltage? Yes, yes, because you know, we saw that if we, like the these are linear equation and we can scale them all the time but but one milliamps is easier to tackle or okay, one volts yeah uh, i have a question yeah. too can you go back to the kv uh kcl for v1 yes. so like that final equation is is that ix over equals v1 over 1k yeah so wait, do we know the value of Ix? No, but where is my pencil? So, but- Yeah, so how do we solve the equation if there's three unknowns and two equations? Wait, I can't hear you, sorry. Yeah, I don't think I can- Now, hear can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Let me let me connect again. Kim, stay there. 